everybody. This is Tierra International on our Friday Facebook Live. I'm Betsy Sobiak, if you don't know me, and today we have also Andrea Henning. Hi, here. Elizabeth Rusky. Hello. And Dr. Allison Miller. Hi, everyone. Funny the roll call. I like the high present here. <laughs> Check. Exactly. Yes. I know. So today. Today on Tierra International Facebook Live, we are going to talk about embodied leadership. We try to talk about a different topic every Friday. You can like our Facebook page if you want to know when we're going live. It's somewhere between 12 and 12.30 Central Time. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and just get the videos and we post them there sometime the week after to stay in the loop. So today, embodied leadership is what we're discussing. And uh, Allison, I know this is a body of work that you've been pretty passionate about for really over a decade, which I think is a long time considering that it's just, like just building a little bit of right. momentum in more of the common leadership language mm -hmm. so is embodied leadership. And why have you been so passionate about it for so long? Well, I think that at the heart of it is a very simple way of saying it is that embodied leadership is about using more of the real estate of who you are as a human being. It's really easy as a leader to kind of just lead from your head and your thoughts, but actually we have a lot more real estate to who we are as a human being to use in our leadership. And by the way, when we say leadership, we don't just mean like leading a company or an organization, you know, um, which I do. And I'm also um, married and I have children and there's a lot of different leadership roles in my life. And I think of embodied leadership is really about, um, fundamentally, it's always about learning and you're, you're continually learning how to lead at a deeper, more fundamental level where you're actually working through your body, not just your mind, to deeper levels of self-awareness, of intuition, of connection. Um, I, for me personally, I think a lot about body leadership is about developing really deep compassion, which allows for a vision, a, a, like a vision that can see and sense and feel things that when you're just in your head, you don't see. And this is really all in the service of you developing the capacity to be the leader that you actually want to be, that you're able to achieve what you are committed to achieving. And there's a congruence between your mind um, your emotions and your body, or you could say your mind and your heart and your body, that, mm -hmm. that all of those kind of energy centers are active and engaged and you're, there's a consciousness of, wait a minute, before I just sort of say something and rattle something off at a meeting or, or react to what someone's saying, just giving an example of a body leadership, would be taking a beat, a pause, and tuning into the rest of your real estate to see what is, what's the wise response versus just doing what's automatic. I think so. And I feel like what you just said there too made me think that a lot of times the natural instinct, just because how, of how we've been trained is to lead with the mind first. And what I hear you saying is to take that pause and actually see if there's another part of your system that has something to offer that is a cleaner, purer, wiser response as opposed to always assuming the mind is the, the one that should come first. And I, I think it's really important because a lot of times what happens is, is that when we're a leader, we are, we're, we feel like we have to have the answer. We have to know what to do right away. And actually that's not wise. <laughs> That it's, we need to take a little time and connect with ourselves and see what else there is, what else we can feel our way into and use that kind of intuition, use our gut instincts, listen to sort of the message of our heart. Um, and I think that we become a much more compassionate leader and we're able to see beyond the behavior that people are engaging in, for example, that's not working, yeah. to see what's going on behind that. And then when we can speak to that, we're much more effective in uh, leading others and, and causing change and, and helping people produce the results that they actually want to produce as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, it's interesting, Elson, um, you know, we, we come up with this topic, embodied leadership, and I was like, um, really, what is embodied leadership? Like, what does that term mean? And I know, 
I'm going to repeat what you said because I think it's so important for um, everyone to understand. When we talk about you being a leader or leadership, it is not a job. It is not a position. It's you leading your own life. And we believe very strongly that every person is a leader because you are in charge. You are leading your own life. And so, you know, when I was trying to put these together, I was like, okay, how do how do we make this for someone like me who's just a common person looking at, okay, what is it that embodied leadership is? And I did about a nanoseconds research on Google. And one of the facts I found, which was really uh, inspiring to me, was it, what you were just saying, that everyone thinks the brain runs the show. But the stats are that there are two areas in your body that have more neurons going off than your brain. And that's your gut and your heart, which is what you just said. So just think about it. If we're not tapping into anything other than this vehicle, we have less than a third of our capacity in this process. And that's amazing. Yeah, we're, not we're not bringing, it's like that's why I, was, I like to think of it as my, my, okay, I got this real estate and I got this real estate. And I, Betsy, you asked earlier why I'm so passionate about this is because I think that I did this for a long time. And by the way, I still produce some pretty good results yeah. <laughs> with just my head. So the question becomes, though, is what what is possible for me uh, in my business? You know, with with and my colleagues, with um, with my children, with my husband, with my community. What becomes possible when um, all of me shows up? And by the way, I think of embodied leadership. It's not just about me as a persona but embodied leadership starts to be able to connect in with others and you start to create a kind of a leadership community of people that are working in a coordinated way. And one of the things that happens, I think when you become more embodied, people start to feel safer around you. People start to tell the truth about what's really going on and you can get to the bottom of what's getting in the way of producing results, for example. And people feel like they can rest in your presence because they know they're going to be met with a big heart, you know, and they're going to be met with compassion. They're going to be met with someone who's not just in this reactive space that the mind tends to be. Andrea, what are you going to add? Yeah. Because we know you have something to add. I have something to add. When do I not? Um, just in, 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 uh, in addition, and, and, and then I will take it uh, uh, on a different uh, uh, thread of thought, in addition to what you say is, um, it is actually when you slow down and ask yourself, what am I present to? Like, what am mm. I present to? Then you slow down and you get some distance to, to that thread. And then like you get present to how is my heart? What is it? that I'm feeling your gut. So a lot of uh, times when I lead groups and we have been talking about a topic for quite some time and there were ideas um, going back and forth, then I just stop and say, okay, now I wanna make a round. What are you present to? And without judgment, like, and then comes the undercurrent and that's actually the undercurrent that's necessary to surface for the transformation. And that is by the simple question, what are you, pre what, what, what are you present to right now and this is something that you can check in with yourself also what am i present to uh right now i'm present to right now how much i love about the, to talk about this topic because for me it's such a, a pivotal topic for really making making a big changes in the world and um one of um uh the leaders in the world gandhi said be the change you want to see in the world and we often use it as be what you want to see in the world, not necessarily that it always needs to be change. But um, one of the things that we do um, in, in, in Tiara when we do our personal plans is we, we check in, what do you stand for? What do you stand for in your leadership? And we have some pretty brilliant questions to surface that. So people get an idea what they, what they stand for, what they really want to embody and then also to have the conversation about when does it when are you actually um, uh, capable of um, having the impact that you want to embody and when not and that gives you an entry point to um, what actually uh, when you fall off the wagon and you cannot embody anymore what you um, what you want 
and it has always to do with that you are kind of pulled out of, uh, of the from the present moment and what pulls you out of it is for everyone something else again like we have talked about that we are not the same so so um this is such an interesting conversation because you cannot be in the embodiment all the time or even 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 more so we are also evolving so you're also evolving into embodying something new all the time so also it's uh, ex expansive uh, but we are the most effective when we embody what we stand for yeah i can hear a couple of things in that one is that being of leadership also expands into your body so there's an embodiment when you're being instead of doing um, i also hear you embody your leadership goals or plan or whatever so that everything's lined up conversations actions behaviors with who you say you are as a leader so there's almost like a demonstration and then i love what you're saying about the present moment too because the body is actually in the present moment and often our minds are you know ping-ponging between the past mm -hmm. and the future the past and the future which is actually the job of the brain so one thing mm -hmm. i want to make sure to emphasize is that the mind is fantastic. Like it's, there's nothing wrong with the mind. Right. It's one of our tools and our gifts for sure. So it's just using each of the tools and gifts in the way that it's really meant and almost as like a interplay. So it's like, yes, what's the job of the mind? Yeah, be thinking about the arc or be thinking about solving a problem or be thinking whatever, great. And then what's the job of the heart and how do you tap into that as far as connection and um, relationship and what's the job of the gut as far as instinct and drive or whatever and those i just kind of made up so yeah you're right. really talking about you know an, an integrated leader you know someone who is mindful it takes mindfulness you know to another level they're present to what's going on right now in their body around them everything and it's really an integrated leader and we talk about that with, uh, within our model. We talk about it's the model for true leadership. And it's about how to actually show up as yourself in a very powerful way. And Allison, when you were starting out talking, we can show up and be powerful in a not so positive way, or we can show up and be powerful in a way that's very attractive and is, is very influential. You know, and... And you know, you can tell a lot about people, even this, I'm going to talk about throwing you guys a curveball, like from a handshake, you know, you think about like body, embodiment isn't just body language, but you know, who you are in your body is a lot about it. But you know, like a handshake, like if somebody has a firm handshake, there was studies that showed that a firm handshake, people automatically perceived you as who, someone who was kind open and engaging. I was totally just thinking about this, that this morning because I actually made it to uh, the gym and we were doing a partner exercise where someone runs down and does like a thing and then they run back and you kind of like tap out to the next person to go. And the person I was partnered with was not, wasn't it like a high five? I was like, high five me. <laughs> like I was really wanting, and I thought about you and the handshake and how whatever that um, being in the body is, it is reflected in so many ways, whether it's a hug, whether it's a handshake, whether it's eye contact, there's also that physicality of having your body express what you want it to about who you are and how you're connecting to the people about you. But I completely thought about you and your thing about handshakes this morning. <laughs> I'm needing a little more. I'm needing a little more from the fist bump right now. <laughs> right. Well, it, it's really a great point is to think about um, when we show up in the presence of others, do we show up sort of from here up or do we show up? You know, and I'm gonna, I can think of a couple things, ways that people can practice, okay? There might seem a little strange, but one of them is when you're out in public and you see a dog like tied up outside of a coffee shop and I mean, don't be unsafe, but it's very interesting because you can um, energetically sort of approach a dog in a way where you're just like, hey, puppy dog, you know, you're just doing it real quick. Or you can actually take a moment and get in the dog's world and see that you have an intuition about how to approach that dog. Um, sometimes dogs are safer than people, but to also start to pay attention to when you're in the presence of another human being, 
tune in a little bit mm -hmm. before you just start talking. It's like I always talk to my kids about when you go to a Starbucks, please look the person in the eye and say, hello. Don't just, because I watch people, they're up on looking on the board, I'll have a grande, you know, where there's no connection. There's no, like, it's like disembodied people walking around, a bunch of floating heads. And the other thing I think is something that I do all the time, and I think it's a really powerful way to get embodied that's quick. Let's say there's something that you need to do where there's a little bit of resistance. Like we all have resistance to tasks we need to do every day. You can say to yourself, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to do this, kind of like from the head. But you can also say, I am going to do this. And there's something about you can, and I encourage people to say it over and over again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this where you're pulling the energy down through your body and you're feeling yourself like, oh my God, I'm alive. That there's so much more power in us than we realize we're just not tapping into it. And when we have very busy lives where we're running from meeting to meeting, we have thousands of emails and things we need to write up and conversations we need to have, it's very easy to become disembodied. And by the way, this can be very disembodied, yeah. right? I, 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 I was just somewhere uh, waiting online and the person in front of me in line was completely lost in this, right? And I'm not being critical. I'm just saying I have to watch this for myself too, is to remember that you can go, yeah, I'm going to have that conversation. I'm going to get my butt to the gym. You know, I'm going to make this request, like with, with a sense of connection to yourself where you're going to show up in a way where people are going to be like, wow, she just made a request. And they're going to take notice in a way versus if you're like, could you do this for me? Versus I would like you to do this for me. It's very different. Yeah. And I like where we're going. I think each of us sharing like what we do to become embodied or what we share with our clients would be awesome. Yeah. You know, I love, I'll bring Peg uh, Rowe into this conversation too. She's one of our partners and um, Peg is a master at heart breathing. You know, that's, that's one of her go-to strategies. And what I love about this is kind of an applied, you know, embodiment, you know, go-to for anybody is we could be sitting in a meeting. I could be doing this right now. I mean, I'm talking, so I'm not going to take a deep breath, <laughs> but you know, you know, I could just be sitting there, rest my hand on my heart and just take a deep breath. And no one knows that I just centered myself in a very calming way. And that to me is what embodied leadership is about. It's really about centering myself so that I can be the best leader around me. Yeah, I would say there are um, four things I will do quite often. One is very common, which is the breathing. So we all know if you do just take a deep breath in and deep breath out, that gets you in the present moment. The other is the grounding through the feet. So like if I like on cross legs, ground through the feet, if I feel like I need to stay present and in my body. Um, the third is, I think some kind of acupressure thing, although I don't know anything really about that. But um, a lot of times I will do a thing where I'll hold a point on my hand which makes me feel really present. Or even what you said, Beth, like in a meeting, if I feel like I need to be more connected to my heart, I might just actually put my hand in my heart in a way that doesn't, I don't think, feel distracting, but just reminds me to pay attention to my heart because my mind started to go spinning. So I will do different things from an acupressure point to get me into the space. And then the, the last thing I do quite often is like an internal dialogue like i'll be like okay what does my mind have to say about this what does my heart feel what does my gut feel so i'll even just like give each space to interact on an ongoing basis in any kind of meeting or situation or relationship or even if i'm on my own sometimes just to kind of tune in and ask each of those what's going on as opposed to just always having my mind run the show but i have to be really intentional about it because i just am so in my head so much of the time that these practices really remind me like wait a minute i just i need to take a breath i need to slow down i need to be present and those things tend to work for me pretty well it, before we hop over to andrea i want to put a little infomercial in here for for women in particular because betsy you said grounding you know standing firm in your feet yeah if you're, if you're standing firm in your feet it actually portrays confidence because there's a solidness to you 
The other thing for women in, in particular um, is to actually spread out a little bit. So if you're in a meeting or something like that, one of the things you can do is just move your stuff out a little bit, take up a little bit more space, which gives you a little bit more breathing room and you're not even aware of it, but you're breathing in bigger, deeper breaths when you yeah. do that. And it's just something, and it actually portrays a, a calm power as well. Yeah, I have to work on putting my shoulders back, which I know is a better, more grounded stance, but I, but I, I tend to go forward because I grew up wanting to be smaller than I was. Like I grew up just wanting to be like smaller and more feminine or something goofy like that. So it's really, like I always have to also remind myself mm -hmm. to like to stand up, put my shoulders back, take up the space that I take up, you know, that kind of thing too, to feel really in the body. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the more you train yourself into then it's getting, it's very really quick. In, in former times, I really needed some really time to do that. And now it's like the instant just, um, especially when I'm aware that, that my breathing gets higher or I get more agitated or sucked into something, just to hold my breath, uh, take a step back. And that could be millimeters. It's not like sitting back and especially like letting myself drop into my feet, into my, into my, uh, uh, um, the lower part of my body and immediately it calms me down. And also the part where you actually, you fill your own space. A lot of people were saying about, um, uh, I need to put, put boundaries. Yeah, you, you, you can put boundaries, but put the boundaries by filling yourself up with your own space. Mm. So you take the space and you can just visualize that like, oh, I'm here. This is this is my space, and you know how some people get into your space, and and you can also um, like uh, experiment with that. When do they do that? When you are maybe somewhere else. So as soon as you more fill yourself with your space, you see that people kind of more respect it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also it's very nice to make a, a little bit of a game uh, uh, out of it. And um, one thing I would like to add to that, like. Um, don't make it into like tricks and tools as, as if um, like I now do all that. Right, like right. Just, just see what helps you, how does it make, make you feel? What is the impact of that? Um, maybe the tools and tricks, they might be right, but, but, but look what works for you. <clears throat> and, and, um, and look at the why behind that. The why is that you wanna have more impact, you feel more confident, you want to feel less stressed, less, less hijacked. And one of the things that, that really, really is a fantastic spin off of being more and more embodied is that you can act in an instant. You can be there. You can face situations that you have never been in, in there before. And you're not hijacked by because you're there and you can be with it. And, and then the real, the real thing, the real inspired action that comes to you guides you through these moments and it makes you a lot less wary um, about scary situations because as a leader we all face new situations all the time but from the embodiment standpoint you know i can handle it not handle it here but i will know instinctively what to do in this new situation yeah so. i think it's true and i haven't thought about that as much before that when you're embodied because you're in the present moment and you're not reactivated or whatever that you do have more tools. Um, this morning I had um, a bunch of guests staying in my house for the past three days, and one of them was five. And she locked all of their belongings into a bedroom door without, be like, so we're on the outside, all their stuff is in the bedroom door, they have to get on the road, and she locked the door from the inside, there's no way to open it from the outside. So, you know, there's like little moments like that where there's like all this chaos, everyone has a moment or whatever, and, and, she, and she came to me and she was like, do you, have a, do you have a key to unlock the door? And I was like, no, this has never happened before, ever. Let's just stand for a minute. Like, so we all stood around the door. I'm like, let's just stand for a moment and take stock of like what resources we have, what we could do. And I wasn't, it wasn't upset. It wasn't that stressful, but it could have been. You know, like you have a moment, whether it's a flat tire, whether it's an email that you got, whether it's you got called out in a meeting for something, like immediately if you go into your head and all of the fears and anxieties and what could possibly go wrong, there's more likely to be the stress, the anxiety, and not like what you're saying, Andrea, connected to, or what are the possibilities in this moment? How 
is it okay? How can we move forward? And I did, you know, pull out an old trick from growing up in the 70s and open the door with like my driver's license. So it was fine. But it's one of those things where if it could have been a much more anxiety producing one, if we didn't just stand for a moment and take a breath together, find the humor in it, and then look and see what we could do to solve the problem. Exactly. Exactly. You know, the other thing I hear in, in this conversation is reminding us that uh, embodied leadership is kind of inside out. Right. You know, it really, you, you can't do it outside in. So if the ego's running the show, if, if I'm worried about how I look, how I do this, then I'm really not present and in my body. The inside out really is this kind of a uh, flow, I guess. Yeah, and I think that something that's really important for people who are on a journey to, you know, you're listening to this and you're thinking about, well, how do I become more embodied is first and foremost is we have to have, I think, humor and compassion for the fact that we're going to be disembodied all the time. I mean, the four of us who are here don't think that we walk around always intact, leading from all of our own real estate. We don't. Just, you know, just ask our families. <laughs> just ask our families, right? So, you know, things happen. Um, and I think that a big part of embodied leadership is actually having a consciousness around that, um, first of all, we're all prone to time traveling. So that's an expression I use with my clients where something happens. It can even be a very subtle shift in your environment or it's a little thing someone says and you're four years old again, or you're you're lost in a whole thing where something that happened maybe a long time ago feels like it's happening again because you know everyone everyone in their life has been traumatized maybe not a major trauma but we've all had slights and things that have happened that have affected our system and the thing about trauma is that it doesn't know time and so we can become disembodied like that and I think something that really helps us reconnect back with our, with our body is to recognize is that when we're disembodied, we're just having a human experience. And to kind of soften and be loving of like, oh, it's okay, you just got disembodied. What a wonderful opportunity. In fact, we need, we actually need to get triggered to develop the capacity to, for embodied leadership. And that... We would love it if, you know, transformation and growth was, as I always like to say, was all rainbows and unicorns, that it, it came from only good things, but it doesn't. You know, transformation and the capacity to be embodied is actually granted to us by having difficulties and challenges. Yeah. Um, and so each time that happens is an invitation to come back. Yeah. I know we're going to wrap up here in a second. And um, the words... For me, it would help if we just like throw out some adjectives that describe embodied leadership. I've heard things like awareness, curiosity, humor. What else? Grounded. Present. Centered. Centered. Connected. Tuned in. Peace. Peaceful. I think influential is another one. Mm -hmm. You know that. It really is the source of inspiration and, and influence. And spacious, right? There's a sense of, you can also think of it like there's a line, right? You're filling in your height, your width. Um, and I just want to say one quick thing too about being embodied, particularly for women, is we live in a world that has taught us to not like our physical bodies, that we live in a world that's taught us that we can love our bodies when they conform to some kind of standard. And I think it's time, it's 2018, <laughs> for us as women to start to take back and create a new narrative about what's beautiful. And it's, it's difficult to be embodied as a woman when you hate your thighs right. or you think your cellulite's disgusting. I just think it's really important that we acknowledge that your body doesn't have to change for you to love it. And it's actually easier to be embodied when there's a sense of like, yeah, and this is it. This is the shape and form that it's in. And I'm going to love it today. And I'm going to inhabit this today exactly as it is. And I have found myself, because it's not my instinct to always be embodied, that it has helped to do some more intensive training to build that muscle. You know, you can do a meditation training if it calls to you, or a weekend retreat, or be out in nature, or study with people who are embodied first and then use the mind as a secondary or a tertiary way of navigating. So 
it does, it does help me when I have done that, when I've actually put myself in an immersive embodied experience and then I can be embodied more day to day. So that's just another thought I would throw out there. Um, mm -hmm. And those are some of the times, Allison, when I felt like for myself, I really had those breakthroughs of like, oh, this is my body. So I might as well be. Exactly. I think that one, another word then, for based on what you just said, Betsy, I would add is that we actually have to learn to trust our bodies. Mm. And for many of us, the signals and messages and things we got from whoever, people of authority in our lives from the culture has been to distrust this. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamental to why I think so many of us walk around in a more disembodied state. Very interesting. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so we're closing this particular topic for this Facebook Live. Like I said earlier, you can like our Facebook page so that you're prompted when we go live on Fridays or subscribe to our YouTube channel where these are posted the following week. Um, actually, I think we know next week's topic. I'll post it in the notes below so you guys know what's coming up next week and you can plan to tune in if you're interested. Uh, thank you guys. It's all thank you. you. And now I feel motivated to be more embodied the rest of my day. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation. It was like trans it's always transformational to have these conversations. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.